Mission Dara Omelia. I'm Cockerlock of Corkham and Fridnev Ilan Oran, Toronto, which we call CFOAT, C F O A T for short. Our energy crop is focused on the residents of the three Ireland Islands, uh, the, the household residents and also the businesses. So we're acting as a sort of support mechanism for anybody on the islands, on the three islands, who want to convert their house to become more energy efficient or who want to get PV panels or who want to get their house retrofitted. And also we're trying to support all the transport people, people who have cars, the minibuses, the boats and the planes uh, to convert to uh, to a clean energy fuel. And then also uh, making use of the energy that's available uh, across the three islands in wind and in water and in the sea and wherever else, solar. Uh, so that we'd have ownership of these energy sources and sell the energy back to ourselves and, and boost our own economy. We have one full, full-time staff member you now for the last good number of years and we have two part-time staff. And we're hoping to further increase that. We think there are great opportunities in the future. There will be spin-off projects which we hope to create out of uh, harnessing our own energy on the islands and use that to create a spin-off small companies that would be based on this renewable energy. Uh, our cooperative um, in the beginning had a real struggle to have enough money simply to keep going to pay the accountant and uh, other annual costs. Um, but then we got an opportunity to become involved in a European uh, funded project with other partners in it from other parts of Europe. And that allowed us to get an income from these projects which which has the benefit of coming in in advance. But we want to spread that out now and not just be reliant on European Union projects. So now, for example, we have a contract with Udras de Gautachte to set up training programs for other small communities interested in the energy transition. And uh, the Udras will pay us for that service. Our co-op here has a vision which entails a sort of a revolution in local economies. Rural local economies until now have been dependent on uh, jobs being brought in from outside and created in order to keep those communities alive. And what we're saying now is with energy available around us in the environment through the wind or the sun or however, uh, the local communities have the opportunity to have their own source of energy and use that prosperity that comes from that to create jobs locally, which they will be in control of. I believe that if we succeed in our vision, that we will uh, secure the future of the Three Iron Islands, we'll secure the population, we'll secure the prosperity of the people living here, and uh, maybe even attract people to come and live in places like this, rather than to live in big cities. Living in a rural location means that you're living in the, in the heart of nature. You're, you're living with beauty uh, and vibrancy all around you. You're, you're living with the elements which I think are very nourishing for, for you even at a soul level. But also, I think um, rural communities tend to be very friendly, uh, united. In general, rural communities work very well together. And certainly, I think, on the Three Iron Islands, living on an island and running a cooperative here on an island does present its challenges. For example, um, we have a cable connecting us to the mainland that runs onto the sea. And that cable has been there now for 20 years. And that is now not sufficient to, be, uh, to allow us to export energy on it in any great amounts. Uh, there's a lot of logistics problems. We can't get contractors to come out to the islands because it costs them more to do jobs on the islands than on the mainland. So we do have lots of different disadvantages and lots of challenges. COVID-19 has definitely slowed down how we do business, um, but nothing has stopped. And, and there's an, an, in another sense, COVID has given us an advantage because we stopped having to travel, which was hugely disadvantageous to us. Um, whereas now, through COVID, we have learned to do all our meetings online. So it's really benefited us hugely. There's an enormous potential, I believe, in supporting social enterprises. Uh, but it requires the government, I think, to look at how they could support uh, these social enterprises to take off. Because for these social enterprises to work properly, just like our cooperative, all of this costs money and a lot of these social enterprises fall by the wayside because they can't, uh, they can't find sufficient sources of funding. So it would be wonderful if the system was put in place where uh, local communities were encouraged to set up these enterprises and were given a small funding stream to allow them to succeed in doing that until they got on their feet and found ways to create their own funding for themselves.